a bloodthirsty clown in a saw trap so grisly that people passed out. These films were just too much for their audiences. 1999's The Blair Witch Project wasn't a mere hit, it was a phenomenon. Made on a budget of only about $500,000, the film went on to gross almost $250 million. It was one of the most talked about movies of the year. One of the reasons The Blair Witch performed so well at the box office was the incredibly clever marketing campaign they employed to hype up the masses. Using the internet, a novel notion at the time, the makers of The Blair Witch Project constructed an elaborate outside narrative about how the events of the film were very real and that the actors in it did indeed meet a grisly demise. There were additional fake documents and additional found footage film made to back up the authenticity of the movie. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. Some audience members were a little baffled when the actors, very much alive, would appear on talk shows to promote the film. The authenticity of the Blair Witch Project already gripped some audiences, but the real reason some people admitted to outright nausea was the film's constant use of handheld camera footage. The movie was actually filmed by the actors, and it was intentionally made to look like an amateur production. This meant no tripods, no steady cams, and a lot of people leaving the camera running when they took off at a dead sprint. According to a report in the Washington Post, the swirling visuals were too much for some, and many reported having to rush to the bathroom to be sick. The Saw movies are, for an entire generation, synonymous with Halloween. Hello, Amanda. You don't know me, but I know you. I want to play a game. When the first Saw became a massive success in 2004, a sequel was rushed into production, which was ready to be seen in theaters the following October. A new Saw film came out every October thereafter for five years. With each sequel, the confusing continuity of the Saw movies would become that much more elaborate, and the gore would be ratcheted up to vomitorium levels. Saw 3 featured a scene wherein a victim was left at the bottom of an empty vat while fetid pig corpses were automatically fed into a meat mulching machine above. If the film's protagonist couldn't stop the pig corpses from coming through the chute, then the victim would drown in liquefied pig entrails. And that's only one disgusting scene in a film full of them. This is also the Saw movie that features a man with a large metal hoop pierced up through his chin and out of his mouth. He is invited by mastermind Jigsaw to yank off his own jaw in order to escape. According to a 2006 report from the BBC, some people passed out and had to be attended to by medics. The reason was simple enough. Saw 3 was simply too much to bear. The poor souls couldn't possibly know about the horrors of the six additional Saw films that were to follow. They would hate them or love them if they happen to like movies so intense they pass out. Currently making modest box office numbers, Damien Leone's killer clown movie Terrifier 2 is so bloody and extreme that ambulances are being called to the few theaters where it is playing. It's rare for a film with such a limited release to cause such an uproar. Stay back. Stop, please stop. Stay away from me. Terrifier 2 follows the continued adventures of Art the Clown a ghoulish serial killer who doesn't speak and looks a lot like Lon Chaney's character from the 1924 film He Who Gets Slapped. Art spends the movie stalking and killing people for no other reason than he seems to enjoy witnessing people suffer. There's a scene in Terrifier 2 wherein a woman is splashed in the face with acid, her bloody, screaming skull left exposed. Additionally, Art decapitates someone, shoots someone, and stabs someone, of course. Art also begins eating one of his victims. The film climaxes with a twisted birth scene. That should perhaps be left undescribed. Extreme gore is a relative rarity in the 2010s and 20s, with some of the bigger horror successes of the recent years, the Insidious movies for instance, being rated PG-13. Had Terrifier 2 come out during the heyday of Saw and other torture-based movies, perhaps audiences would have accepted the film's violence. In 2022, not so much. The film's executive producer, Steve Barton, had to issue a warning about the film's content. After the success of Dracula in 1931, director Todd Browning was granted leeway to pursue a passion project he had long dreamed about. Browning was always fascinated by carnivals and traveling circuses, and at age 16, ran away from home to work in one. Yes, people did indeed run away and join the circus. For several years, he worked as a barker, a contortionist, and even performed a live burial act, wherein he billed himself as the living hypnotic corpse. Wanting to honor the circus workers in film, in particular the sideshow performers, Browning made the feature film Freaks in 1932, which starred a cast of real circus employees who were featured in the institution's notorious freak shows. Stories go that MGM employees were so unnerved by non-able-bodied actors visiting the studio lot that some of them, notably Daisy and Violet Hilton, had to rest inside tents out of the public eye. It was this sort of unfair prejudice that Browning was seeking to combat by making Freaks. 
The controversy continued into the film's release, and audiences were unready for a mainstream melodrama about the lives of circus sideshow performers. The main story of Freaks involves the sideshow performer Hans, who is seduced by and marries the circus trapeze artist Cleopatra, who intends to poison him and take his substantial inheritance. This is understandably upsetting for Hans's first wife, Frida, and Cleopatra's plan soon leaks its way out to the rest of the circus performers, who eventually attack Cleopatra with knives. The final scene reveals that Cleopatra has been transformed into a bizarre chicken woman and is now on display as part of the circus sideshow she dared to disrespect. Anyone who has seen The Elephant Man likely knows the way circus sideshows exaggerate the backstories behind the unusual proportions of their freaks. In The Elephant Man, John Merrick's mother was terrified by elephants while pregnant, and the movie Freaks received an equally exaggerated legend about how the film was so terrifying and the people in it so unusual that a young mother watching the movie miscarried her pregnancy. There is no documented evidence of this, but the legend persists, 